House will come to order. Nominations are now in order. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, I rise to nominate Jim Jordan for the Speaker of the House. Now, I've listened to the speeches this week, and I can already tell you what my friends on the other side will say using their poll-tested phrases. But let me correct the record. Jim Jordan is an effective legislator. <laughs> to legislate is about more than the name on the bill. It's about reaching compromise and working long hours behind the scenes to get the job done. The House will come to order. The gentleman may resume. When you are the chairman of a committee, you are responsible for dozens of bills passing the House and being signed into law. So let me tell you a few facts that don't come out of the polls. As the leader of the Judiciary Committee, Jim has passed more bills through the House in just three years than the entire Democrat leadership team that has their collective 28 years in Congress. Mr. Aguilar has a whopping one whole bill signed into law, a post office in San Bernardino. I guess that's good enough to be caucus chair. Jim Jordan, on the other hand, has a hand in drafting bills like the RAINS Act to curb unaccountable bureaucrats. He helped negotiate and pass H.R. 2, the strongest border security bill this House has ever passed. And many of you know, because you were in the room, watching Jim find compromise, watching Jim listen to your position and finding a bill that can pass. And let's put this in reality. We've had large majorities, but we never could pass a border security bill. That takes leadership. Now, they're going to get upset by it. Why? Because every single Democrat voted against securing our border. Democrats are attacking Jim because they don't want the American people to remember that they voted against securing and keeping a wide open border. They may not want the American public to know the number of people we catch on the terrorist watch list. They may not want people to know what the future holds and the security for our nation based upon their policies. Name me one bill Democrats passed that would secure our border. I'm waiting. You can't because they haven't. Mr. Speaker, the truth is, if we measure lawmakers by how many bills have their name on it, we are using the wrong measuring stick. Some of my members I know with the most bills to their name are the most selfish. Jim Jordan, on the other hand, is one of the most selfless members I know. I've known Jim a long time, so I want to do something different. I actually called the freshman members on his committee and asked them, what do you think of your chairman? Here's just a few. I quote, Jim empowers every member of judiciary to pursue what interests them. 
A quote by another, he lets each of us take the lead on the issues that are important to us, even letting freshmen and junior members take important roles. Another one, he trusts our judgment on how we handle issues and witnesses and always seeks our input on key issues. Another, as a freshman, he had me lead off a hearing that related to my subject matter expertise and he goes out of his way to highlight members' successes. He is straightforward, honest, and reliable. That is who Jim Jordan is, and that's what being a speaker is all about. Now, some of you might not know this, but Jim and I have a long history. We created because we take our job serious. I first met Jim as a candidate. I traveled to Ohio. I remember pulling up for breakfast at a Bob Evans in Ohio. There was Jim having a meeting listening to constituents. I traveled with him throughout the day from Rotary to Farm Bureau to just listening to people that had concerns. And I watched them, the same Jim Jordan I see today. He was a leader, a listener, and a fighter. We were actually elected to Congress that same year and became close friends. It was a small class. There was only 13 of us, one of the smallest Republican classes in modern history. Over time, we took different routes. Jim actually ran against me for leader in 2018. It was a hard-fought battle. But I never once questioned his skills or commitment to this conference or this country. After the race, I became leader and we had an opening for the ranking member on House Oversight. Jim didn't even, even apply for the job. I walked into steering. Didn't tell steering. I walked into the other room, and I picked up the phone, and I called Jim. I said, I know you're not running for the job, but I believe in what Jim Collins says in the book, Good to Great. You put the right people in the right seats on the bus. And Jim, you and I may have challenged one another, but you were the right person for that seat. And it was right when he took that job. It was right again when I asked Jim to step up and join the Intel Committee when Democrats put politics over people and turned the Intel Committee into an impeachment committee. It was right again when we asked Jim to step up and be the right person to lead Judiciary Committee as chairman. And Jim is the right person to take that seat behind me to be our next Speaker of the House. Mr. Speaker, we have an important job to do. The American people expect us to focus on the most pressing issues. We've watched what a Democrat majority has done and brought us inflation like we haven't seen since the 70s. We've watched what the Democrats have done by opening up our border, bringing fentanyl, killing Americans each and every day. And now we have a war in Israel. This country is too great for small visions. Trust me, being speaker is not an easy job, especially in this conference. <laughs> but I've seen Jim spend his entire career fighting for freedom, no matter what, no matter the odds, and I know he is ready for the job. And so it is my honor to say, as a member of the Republican Conference, I am directed by the vote of that conference to present for the election to the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives the name of my friend, the Honorable Jim Jordan, a representative from the state of Ohio. I yield back.
The House will come to order. The tellers agree in their tally that the total number of votes cast is 429, of which the Honorable Jim Jordan of the State of Ohio has received 194. The Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the State of New York has received 210. The Honorable Patrick McHenry of the State of North Carolina has received six. <laughs> All right, the House will come to order. The House will come to order. The Honorable Byron Donalds is, of the State of Florida has received two. The Honorable Tom Emmer of the State of Minnesota has received one. Lee Zeldin of the State of New York has received four. The Honorable Steve Scalise of the State of Louisiana has received eight. The Honorable Mike Garcia of the State of California has received one. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the State of California has received two. The Honorable Bruce Westerman of the State of Arkansas has received one. No person having received a majority of the whole number of votes cast by surname, a speaker has not been elected. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess subject to the call of the Chair.